The swing axles are too much of an angle to allow the spindle to fit on. What I did is loosen up the uh, adjusters. That way it allows me to move the swing arms freely so I can line up this uh, spindle. All right, there was an issue. Had to move this ball joint, the bottom one, over so I could get it to line up. We are lined up. Now we have to adjust the uh, adjusters down there, bring it back down. Not sure how that's gonna happen though. Okay, so we are in here, top and bottom. The secret to getting that lined up was to loosen up the adjusters which allowed me to freely move the uh, swing arms and you know move them up into position in order to line them up with the holes for the spindle. The only problem is that now my adjusters <laughs> are like in the middle somewhere and I have a feeling I'm gonna need them adjusted all the way down. I'm gonna need these to be adjusted all the way down here because that's gonna be the highest point, which would um, make my car higher. You know, it would, it, would, uh, it would bring the swing arms down this way. So when I put the spindle on right now, I'm gonna uh, do a test it to see how low my car sits, but I have a feeling it's gonna be sitting too low. And so now I'm trying to figure out how to push these down and I tried already and it's pretty hard, so I'm gonna have to figure something out with that. But first let's do a test and see how low my car sits. I'm not gonna put the caliper on, I'm just gonna put the, the hub on and uh, I'm not gonna connect the brakes or anything like that. It's just gonna see to, this is gonna be to see how low my car sits. Let's see what happens when I lower it. Moment of truth. Let's see what happens. How low does it go? Wow. Damn. That thing is low. Low, 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 low. <sighs> Might be too low. Let's see how much clearance we have up in here. Ooh, we have like, I have like two, two and a half fingers. Yeah. So, I don't have the shocks on yet, so that might help a little bit, but I doubt it. Uh, I would be okay with like another inch higher maybe, so that the tire is like right here. Right now it's like up in here, so maybe about right there, just to give me another inch of tire clearance between the top of the tire and yeah, there's there's not a lot of space in there. So I know when I sit in the car, it's gonna bring it down too. And when I drive it, it's probably gonna settle some more. So I'm gonna have to figure out how to lift this, adjust it so it's lifted a little higher. But there it is. Oh yeah. Looks like I need to, <laughs> I also need to adjust my, uh... well, I still need to put the tie rod in tie rods in as well see this tire is pointing pointing in this way and this one over here is I think is straight <laughs> yeah so still need to attach my tie rods but there you go so here's where we are right now my car is too low and I believe the tires are gonna rub up here on the inside of the fender well. There's only about maybe this much clearance, which doesn't give me very much travel, suspension travel. So what I'm gonna try to do is raise the car up a little bit. Um, 
My car is a little lower because I do have drop spindles. So that, in addition to the adjusters, is making it too low. I do want to try to bring it back down a little bit. Uh, the highest you can go is all the way down here. And then if you want your car very low to the ground, you can move it up here. The problem up here is that your shift coupler, your shift uh, rod is gonna come right here, very close to this. So you can't actually put this adjuster down all the way. I think what some people do is they leave this one up a little bit higher and then they put this one all the way down to the bottom if they can. The only, the other problem is though, is that getting the spindle onto the swing arms is very, very difficult if you can't move the um, the swing arm. So you kind of have to have that loose, the adjuster in the middle loose so you can move this around. But then once you put these on, you can't move these up and down. They're, the tension is so, you know, the, the torsion bars right here keep it from moving. So you can't just move it freely. So what I'm gonna do is I'll disconnect it from my spindle and then adjust it down just a little bit both of them and then try to get the spindle to fit on there. It would not fit, it would not go on when the swing arms were adjusted all the way down. It just won't do it. There's just, they're too, the alignment is way off. So I'm gonna disconnect it from here, just move it down a little bit, tighten it up in the middle, and then see if I can get the spindle to get back on there. Let me show you the secret, what I'm doing. So using the jack to lift the bottom swing arm in order to get this to line up with the ball joint. So it doesn't reach, I'll show you on the other side, um, but if you can get the bottom one on, you can use a jack to lift up the swing arm in order to reach the top one. Now the reason why I have that is because on the bottom, you can see my adjusters are actually at two different um, settings. So the bottom one, I have it, I only have three notches there. And then you can see how much gap is there um, on the top, you see that gap? And then the top one, I have it more towards the middle. And that's because the shift rod has to clear. See that shift rod right there, this black bar? It has to have enough clearance um, to clear the adjuster. So you have to have that one set up higher, like right in the middle. I have 10 notches on there. So they are two different locations. I could raise this one up to be equal with the top one, but I need to have better uh, clearance because I want my tires to be pushed down. And that way I have more clearance up on the top so it doesn't rub up here. So we'll see what happens. I'm not sure, I might still get some rubbing. I need to locate some torsion bars for the two that I'm missing. I'm missing two right here. I think I'm missing two on the bottom as well. That's also gonna help give it more tension. And I still need to put the shocks on too. So that's gonna help as well. Um, and then also I could get some smaller tires. So I'm running 195. Oh no, these are 185. 6515 so I might go with some one uh, 185 60s for the front and then 195 65s for the rear I'm borrowing these tires from my other car right now we'll see I might end up just leaving these tires on here for the back they're already balanced and everything but I do want to get some maybe 185 60s for the front just to give me a little bit you know a lower profile to help also with the rubbing if it's a problem if not i'm good all right let's do let's do the other side don't tighten this one down all the way it gives you a little bit of leeway to, to mess with and make sure you jack it up from the swing arm not from the spindle No. Easy as that. 
Now you can just tighten up your, your bolts and you're good to go. All right, other tech tip is that your speedo cable will not route if you have the bolt on there. So you have to take the bolt off the ball joint bolt in order to get the speedo cable spindle and for it to go through straight. There we go. Boom. So the, tr <laughs> the trick about getting your speedo cable on there is that you have to take off this in order to give you enough clearance to run it through because it has to come through in a straight line. It's very, it, it, it's not very difficult. I don't even think you can do it. I tried it getting the spindle cable through, speedometer cable through here if it's not in a straight line because it is metal, you know, it's cable, but it's got a metal tip on it. So that's what I recommend for getting your speedle cable through. And you also need to run it in between your torsion bars if uh i think in the stock runs up above the top bar but it won't reach so you got to run it in between the the two bars in order for it to have enough length to make it through so there is your tech tip so another tech tip is make sure you get some of these cotter pins i picked these up at uh, o'reilly's and it says an assortment but i think they're all one size so this you're going to use in a couple places. All right, so yeah, you're going to use it on this bolt here. Should be a hole in here somewhere. There it is. So there you go. So there you go. Once you get it through, just fold over the ends and that'll lock it in place. So I just need to tighten down this steering dampener. I already got this side bolted in. I might be missing a washer right here, but for now, I'm just going to use it like that, and then I can put on the tie rod ends. Well, I pretty much have the front beam installed. All that is left is just the tie rods and to do an alignment, but uh, I'll probably do that in a different video. So there she is in all her glory. This does have the disc brake. Um, spindle drop spindles on there so that might be a little different from your setup it's also from the uk so it has the um, brake booster mount on the right side and the left side but uh yeah that's it let me know if you have any questions leave a comment i'll try to get back to you as soon as i can let me know what you think